Good evening, you're watching S3 TV News. Coming up, we get a taste of the dark stuff. What would Easter be without chocolate? And time flies by when you're the driver of the train. We ride the rails in Cleethorpes. And Emma speaks to the Reverend Nick Brown, the rector of St James's Church in Louth. It is Easter, the great spring festival, celebrated in one form or another since the dawn of time. Let's remind ourselves why we welcome back the sun. You're joining me, and here is Reverend Nick Brown, who belongs to the parish church, or is the rector of the parish church of Louth, should I say. Um, first of all, just starting, what is the significance of Easter for the Christian church? Easter's probably the, the most significant event and festival of the, the Christian year. Um, it's preceded by a week in which we remember the last week of Christ's life. And then we remember on Easter Day, the gift and the potential promise that there is in the new life that comes with belief in God through Christ. Okay. Now, we have a lot of tradition, obviously, in the yes. church. Um, and there are many events on the, the, the build-up to Easter Sunday, isn't there? Where does it all start, really? I mean, although Easter Sunday is sort of the climax of things, it starts really with Palm Sunday and for many churches reliving the, the events of that last week, almost recalling them in real time. Mm -hmm. So on Palm Sunday, remembering the entry into Jerusalem, the throwing down of palms on the street, the, the hopes of triumph, and perhaps earthly triumph. And that then takes us through the story to the realisation that that wasn't going to be possible. Um, the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples where they realised that things weren't going to turn out perhaps as some of them had thought. Yeah. Um, the desperation as Jesus went out, realising what was lying ahead, the betrayal by one of his closest friends to the people in authority, and then the events of Good Friday, we remember the pretty horrid death on a cross, um, someone persecuted for what they held mm. dear, taken to, to death. And then the events of Easter Day with the empty tomb, which provide the hope um, uh, that actually love can overcome anything, that all can be transformed. Well, in terms of, because. The sense you get, it is a very emotional time, really, Easter, isn't it? Do you think it makes people question themselves at all? Certainly, a lot of the people who I'm travelling Easter with this year, it, it does affect people um, at the deepest level. If you let the story speak to the depths of your heart and soul, yeah. it can transform and change lives completely. Now, the services that you're doing, what, one of the things that, that is part of Easter as well is the Maundy Thursday, which has, has just happened. Yes. Um, explain the importance of that tradition. Well, it remembers the, the last evening that Jesus spent with his disciples. Um, he'd been teaching, living with them, um, preaching his message, 
um, they'd had all these hopes and they realised that, that perhaps that wasn't going to turn out. So he had that last evening. He washed their feet as they came in, the role of a servant, so it turns so, sort of society's expectations on its heads, yeah. where the, the leader did the most menial of things. Um, they then shared a meal where they s had bread and wine, a sign of their fellowship. Um, and But also it became, for Jesus, he, he mentioned the bread becomes my body, the, the wine my blood, a sign that actually um, it was by completely giving your life mm. to those who you care for and love about, love for, that is behind what he was saying. Um, so it's God's love that actually can save humanity from from its potential to do to do bad ill. Now, within the church itself, um, I know s most people will recall that on the Monday Thursday, the washing of the feet still takes place, doesn't it? In many churches, yes. I mean, the, the, the church as a whole, there's a, a richness of tradition which everyone brings their own part to. But certainly, in, in the parish church in in Louth in St James, there, we, we meet together together with friends from other churches and we do um, wash symbolically a few people's feet yes. and it's the person who's leading the service who does that. So whilst often we lead, lead a service in all the robes and the grandeur pointing to the glory of God, at that moment we strip them all off mm. and remember the, the fact that actually Jesus came as servant to all okay. and that behind that glory lies being a servant. Okay, well thank you for that. We're going to come back um, later to <laughs> talk more about Easter. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now we talked earlier about the significance of Easter and, and what it means um, to people in the church and we obviously touched on Maundy Thursday mm. but Good Friday is I suppose, I don't know, I have recollections of child as this being quite a, a powerful day in, in one respect though it's quite sad isn't it? Yeah I mean obviously there's the, the, the mourning and the loss um, of, of remembering the death of, of Christ, um, perhaps remembering Mary and the disciples standing there at the cross watching the person who they loved being put to death. Um, but at the back of the mind of, of obviously as we know what the story mm. ends like, um, that, that that death leads to a new hope, um, yes. a, a new life to come, um, both perhaps a life in eternity but also a life here on earth. And within the church on Good Friday, what would you traditionally do? Generally, um, after an, an early morning service where we sort of prepare ourselves for the day, um, there are a range of tr trying to actually tell the story in different ways for different people. Okay. So there's a, a fairly simple service where we remember and just read the passion, remember those events, and reflect on them, and normally then spend a longer time meditating on that later on with the help of poetry, words, some drama. And then often in the evening, um, there'll be a, a more reflective service and at St James we have the choir who lead us in music right. and, and prayers that help us just to reflect on the depth and meaning of the day. Because sometimes you see a lot of the churches or they put on the passion of the Christ, yes. don't they, yeah. to, to, to take part yes. in that symbolic journey. Yeah. How, is that something your church has ever done? Um, well, on Palm Sunday we, we, we read it, and also Good Friday in particular, um, normally from John's Gospel, the, 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 foot, the sort of the longer version of the, of, of the Passion. Um, so that gets read at least once that day, right. often a couple of times, and it's sort of the structure behind almost all the services yes. is something of that. Yeah, and then leading on obviously Easter Sunday, which yes. is, I suppose then is that day of, of like you said, it's about hope then, isn't it? Yes. That it's that new so having, having sort of ended Good Friday with the, the body of, of Jesus Christ in the tomb, there's then that realisation of the, the empty tomb and the mystery and wonder of that. Um, and many people come at that from different angles. The church um, has different, so some different understandings, but behind it all is the fact that um, the death of Christ on the cross, God's love given for mankind, if we accept that, it brings new life. Mm. Um, so you can see that in the resurrection appearances of Jesus to the disciples, the way they live completely different lives once they've been touched by that reality of God's love. Yes. So there's a hope in the Christian life that not just at Easter but at all times we can let that love lie in our hearts yes. and let that love transform the way we live our lives. Yeah. Um, and of course we're human so we do fail. We need to come back and remind ourselves of those central truths. I think, and that is it. At the end of the day, yeah, humans have those failings which I suppose yeah. make it real 
but like you say, it's that reflection, isn't it, I suppose, at this time yeah. of year in one respect. And I think the, the events of the whole of that week remind us of, of our own humanity, mm. that the range of emotions that there are from hope to despair, um, but that in the end, that there's, there's something behind it that gives us that hope of what might be. So, packed Easter in one respect, you've got yeah. plenty of services going on. I mean, for the rest of the, the, the Easter vacation, I suppose, yeah. if we put it like that, what other things have you got happening? Is there other events? Yes, I mean, uh, at the beginning of the week, we, we started off with actually a chess competition, welcoming the community in because the church is a space for the whole community. Right. So in the, in the coming weeks, we've got a photographic exhibition. It happens to be the 500th anniversary of the Spire at St. James in Louth. Okay. So we're celebrating, I suppose, the, the joy that we find around us yeah. um, in creation, in, in what people do. Um, so we're welcoming the people with, with that. There's a competition for photography. We've got a number of concerts coming up. Okay. Um, and then a whole series of events later on in the year as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for coming and talking to yeah. us all about Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, Easter doesn't have just religious connotations. For the young and most of the older, it also means chocolate. At one shop in Lincolnshire, that means increasing capacity and two people every day dedicated to packing up the delicious confectionery. Richard Morris went to the chocolate drop just outside Market Raisin. It's Easter, and for some business owners in particular, that can mean only one thing. Yes, the chocolate drop near Market Raisin is actually busier than ever. With all of the excitement around Easter, maybe Alan Dixon could explain the original Easter story. Well, the Easter story, of course, is um, the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring was a lady called Aosta, and Aosta's symbol of spring was the egg. In the 5th century AD, the Christians hijacked the egg to become the symbol of the rebirth of mankind, and the name Aosta became distorted until it became Easter. One of the other factors is that Aosta had a favourite animal called a hare. And when you look at rabbits today for Easter, they're not rabbits, they're hares. They've all got long ears. To give an idea of the capacity required, Alan says that at this time of year they have to produce about 50 chocolate eggs a day, or else supply simply wouldn't meet demand. Weirdly, the most popular item the shop sells throughout the year are chocolate tractors. Uh, at Christmas time, there are plenty of other gifts for people to buy. At Easter time, fundamentally, there's only chocolate. And of course, uh, with Easter eggs and rabbits and ducks, all the sort of things we make, um, in proper chocolate, great temptation. Easter is manic, we've got lots of commercial orders. Uh, these things over here, these owls, they're all for a commercial order in London. We're making Easter eggs like crazy. Uh, and of course, we're having to continue with our, all our normal flavours as well. The changing of the season, the religious significance, the two bank holidays, the excuse to binge on chocolate. We wanted to know what you think is the best thing about Easter. Easter, children, eggs. <laughs> and spending time with your kids, seeing the faces when you when they wake up, giving the chocolate eggs, just a bit of family time really. Break from work. <laughs> the same, yeah. yeah. No, we, we don't do We don't do a lot We don't have breaks now. Well, Easter is about religion, isn't it? It's about God. Is that what it's about for you? Yeah. Yeah? That, well, that's, it is. But it ends, it's all about the kids having their Easter eggs, isn't it, now? But that is the true meaning of it. And what do you guys get up to? Not a lot. No? <laughs> no, not a lot. Okay. Well, Easter's about the religious service and uh, holidays. What do you do on Easter? Uh, I go to church. Yeah. yeah. And Easter eggs, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Used to with the kids. Well, it's, it's boil, boil eggs up, paint them, and then get the kids to roll them down a the hill. Used to do a lot of that, but yeah. my, all my kids are growing up now. Um. I'm off to Florida, actually. Oh, are yeah. you? I'm getting out of here, so... <laughs> what are you doing there? Uh, Disneyland with the kids, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Are you going to do anything Easter-related while you're there? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's an Easter egg hunt, so... It's good for the kids, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. We'll I'll, have... sec I'll secretly enjoy it. Do, do, do you enjoy Easter, or...? Yeah. Too well, definitely. For the grandkids, just buy them little presents and... see their little faces when they're... You know, they all get excited about the rabbits and the um, little chicks and 
All the rest of the thing. No, do, you, do you still do anything over Easter? Oh, I don't celebrate Easter. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it's got to be the resurrection, hasn't it? That's what it's about for you, yeah? Absolutely. You're, you're a religious man? Uh, I'm a believer, yeah. Best thing about Easter, when it's over. <laughs> you're not a fan? <laughs> uh, not really, I'm not really religious, so. And I don't really, like, I don't know the point of giving eggs out and stuff, you know what I mean? It's like... And the eggs. Definitely the eggs? The eggs, yeah, of course. Chocolate, isn't it? Two young entrepreneurs bought the light railway in Cleethorpes last year. Like modern-day Isambard Kingdom Brunels, they are building fast. The latest construction is a new cafe where Dave Nunn had a cuppa. Cleethorpes Light Railway is synonymous with half-term trips in the sun, and now the railway is looking forward to good times after new investment. Well, um, my business partner and myself uh, purchased the railway last May. Um, uh, the railway and we purchased the pub and cafe business of the Cleethorpes Coastlet Railway in October last year and we felt it necessary to um, improve the facilities here at Lakeside Station. So over the course of the winter we've been working very hard um, putting in a brand new cafe and improving our facilities. Fresh blood can help any company, but it's the age of the new owners, John being 19 and his partner 23, that's most surprising but they're learning a lot on the job. Yes, well, I mean, uh, my father died when I was at the age of 10, so I had to grow up very quickly, um, and uh, it helped a great deal um, with dealing with um, other, um, you know, social um, factors. And, uh, you know, w we think we're doing OK at the moment. There's still a lot to learn, and um, there always is in business, and especially in this type of business, the leisure industry and, and tour tourist industry. Um, and a year on, well, I've learned a lot in this past year, um, and so is my business partner, so yeah, we're just going to keep going and learn as much as we can. Even though the pair are still learning, they're full of passion for the railway and that will be key to the success of the new cafe and the railway's future. For the love of it, you know, um, we are uh, rail enthusiasts at heart, but um, there needs to be something making the money and when you put in a nice cafe and gift shop, you know, that helps the railway, we can, we can invest further in the railway. Um, and uh, well, we, we, yeah, we just love it. We love. Um, we really enjoy it down here at the railway. There is a bit of competition in the area, but it's nothing other than healthy competition. We like it, um, and every railway has a good cafe. Um, it needs one, um, so we hope it will be a, a, a roaring success. Yes. Time now to ask a big question of some little kids. This week we're at Stanford School in Laceby. We are from Laceby Stanford Primary School. This week's question is, why do we have Easter eggs? Well, I've heard a lot of rumours. I don't really know which one is true. I've heard... Um, that they're like sort of the shape of the boulder that was put in front of the tomb Jesus was put in after he died. Eggs were like the symbol of like the rock as the tomb and also like it's new, it represents new life as when like um, Jesus was like resurrected. I think, because I remember reading somewhere that they used to paint actual eggs. I think after chocolate was invented, a few people just decided they thought that that would be fun, so it probably the tradition carried on. I think it started in the um, uh, 1500s, about that time, and they just painted them like not chocolate. And then when it came to the Victorian times, they made it out of chocolate. I think Easter eggs are a sign of new life because chicks um, and birds are born f um, from eggs. So I think Easter eggs are a sign of new life. Um, and that is what I've always thought Easter eggs were a sign of, really. When they all like found out that the boulder was like shaped like an egg and when chocolate was in first invented. It, I truly think it's because like the new life, like because Easter eggs and the eggs and chicks and things were born out of eggs. So, yeah, I, that's why I think it's from. Um, it represents new life in, in normally all the all chicks are born in spring and spring is when Easter is, so it might represent that. <laughs>
for Reflections. This week we visited the Right Reverend David Court, Bishop of Grimsby. I think it's one of the challenges for those of us who would say we're part of the church, uh, that where is at Christmas uh, in our world, despite all the commercialism, Jesus still gets some kind of look in. Easter is much harder for many people to engage with. Christmas is soft, uh, at least in the way we imagine it, a baby, a manger, a star in the sky. Uh, but Easter is harder, a betrayal, a trial, a broken body hung on a cross. And yet that's where the story leads to. It's what millions of people across the world will be reminding themselves of over this Easter time. And what was it all about? What is it all about? A tragic end to a life gone wrong, full of potential but snuffed out in its prime? Or a sacrificial act which shows that at the heart of the universe is a God whose very heart is love itself. Greater love has no one, said Jesus, just before the events we're about to remember. Then they lay down their lives for their friends. And so heroic failure or a deliberate act that millions still find gives hope, gives purpose, gives meaning to their lives today. I hope you have a really great Easter, whatever that might mean for you. As much chocolate as you feel is good. But I hope more than that, you might find time to actually stop and to get engage with the Easter event. Might even go to a service at your local church and find, like I did over 30 years ago, that love which is at the heart of our world. That's all we have time for. If you have a story for us, please go to our Facebook or Twitter pages. Details on the screen. Email news at estuary.tv or phone Grimsby 31553. Until next time, good evening. Estuary TV's weather, sponsored by Hornsby's, celebrating 100 years in buses. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV's weather. Although the odd light shower can't be ruled out, most parts should be dry with some bright or sunny intervals over the weekend and into Easter Monday. Estuary TV's weather, sponsored by Hornsby's, celebrating 100 years in buses.